So we're talking today about waves. Waves are the uh, the propagation of energy through matter, and this cool wavy background will help us remember that. Waves are energetic oscillations through a medium. It's started by the motion of an object in the medium, and is carried on by the motion of the medium's movement. Waveform can be analyzed using the same terminology as other forms of periodic motion. So there's some, some big words here. Waves are energetic, so we're not so much caring about particles as we are about energy. The particle of a wave doesn't actually move all that much. Um, it's the energy that we're following. Where does that energy go? So when I clap my hands, I cause some disturbance here, and the medium, the air, that we are all bathed in at the moment was disturbed by that, and that the air molecules are right around here moved, and they bumped into neighbors, and they bumped into neighbors, and bumped into neighbors, and those bumping neighbors bumped into your ear. And that's why you heard the clap, right? Now, the individual particles of air didn't necessarily do all that much moving. The individual particles got out of the way of my hands and ran into their neighbor very, very quickly. And so that uh, the individual particle motion was small, but the energy moved from as far away as you and I are, and it moved very, very quickly. So energy moves very fast um, in, a, in a wave, but the particle itself doesn't actually move that far or even that fast. Um, waves are energetic oscillations through a medium. So oscillations, we talked about periodic motion oscillations last week. An oscillation is any motion that has a restoring force that, when disturbed, starts to move and continues moving until something stops it or it gets damped by friction and things of that nature. So sound waves are oscillations of the air and those oscillations hit your ear. And the speed with which they hit your ear and the frequency with which they hit the, your ear and how far they make your ear drum move uh, all have meaning to your brain and your turbulence. Waves are energetic oscillations through a medium. The medium is very critical. You can't have a wave without a medium, at least not a mechanical wave like what we're talking about here today. Um, no waves exist without a medium. There's no wave in a vacuum. Um, and so mechanical waves like the ones we're talking about today require some, some substance to travel through. We can make the substance be a solid, and there were waves going through the solid there. If you're underwater and you scream, somebody can hear you, and that sound travels then through the water medium, right? Don't inhale after you scream because then you're done. But um, if you make noise underwater, the water can be the medium, or you and I right now bathe in the air. The air is the medium. So it's energy we're following, not particles. It's their periodic motion we're interested in, and we have to have a medium to do this. Started by the motion of an object in the medium and carried by the motion of the medium's movement. So the object that starts it doesn't necessarily have to keep moving but it starts the motion and the medium keeps moving. The waveform is analyzed using the same terminology, so we are still going to run into things like amplitude and frequency and all of that happiness, right? Here's a wave pool, and this is a, uh, this is a place where they test you know, various boat designs or things of that nature and see how the design does in waves of various frequency amplitudes and, and see how the, see if the boat will capsize or survive, yeah. So if uh, we, were, if, like, we were all underwater, would we be able to detect each other? Well, our anatomy doesn't, isn't designed to make those sounds underwater. Um, so you would hear, boom, 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 right? It wouldn't, wouldn't make sense. Um, but uh, organisms that are designed to communicate underwater, like whales and dolphins and fish and crabs and lobsters that can make noise underwater, um, and God designed their anatomy to function in that medium, yeah, they talk to each other underwater, yes? Does it have that, like, some of that aperture with you? Yes, yeah, they do. 
And so this is a very large wave tank, and the way it's that the waves are created is there's a wall here, and the wall is hooked up to all of these hy hydraulic actuators. And when the hydraulic arms push on the wall and then bring the wall back, that creates this motion. And then that motion is carried through the body of water. Um, and they can create waves of any size or frequency that they want uh, to test things in this wave tank. You can also see something like this if you go to the water park here. Um, there's a, a wave tank that you can surf the waves, and the, that is created by something like this too. Okay? Here's something a little bit less dramatic. Here's a little baby duck. Oh, a little baby duck. And he's moving through the water, and his feet are moving, and his chest disturbs the water as he moves. So there are some waves coming off of here, and there's like a little bow wake coming off of the little baby duck. And those waves are going to continue out, and the waves coming off of him will continue in theory, forever, but we know not really forever because they're going to be damped. There's gravity affecting this, and eventually the waves will die out. But all of this turbulence back here, be right behind the duck because of his feet, is also waves that will eventually subside. But but it's the oscillations of the medium disturbed by the duck, and so those are waves. And of course, sound waves. The annoying dog that barks at you in the middle of the night. I had one last night. I, one o'clock in the morning, dog in the park. <laughs> Straight up, nobody's dog. Barking in the park. I get up, I shine my flashlight at his eyes. And he looks at me. I turn off my flashlight, I'm like, yeah. Be quiet. <laughs> I don't want to yell at him because everybody in my family is asleep except me. And all my neighbors are asleep. <laughs> Turn off my flashlight. Yeah. So, so, so there is a rock that used to be in our yard and isn't anymore. Um, yeah. So the dog is 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 making a motion with his vocal cords and disturbing the air, and those disturbances travel through the medium and strike your eardrum. Right? Those are sound waves. We use the same terminology we used before: crest or trough. Um, are, are high and low points of the wave. The amplitude is the distance from a crest to, uh, for, from either the crest or the trough to the median line. And then wavelength is distance from crest to crest, or you can go from trough to trough. Um, and we use the Greek capital letter L, lambda, right there, um, to represent wavelength. And then the number of crests passing per second is the frequency. So. We've seen these words before in talking about waves, and we use them um, for periodic motion, for pendulum. Um, and now we're going to be talking about them with regard to energy oscillations through medium. Okay, crest, trough, the high point of the wave, the low point of the wave. Uh, and then amplitude, the distance from the medium to the crest, from the medium to the trough. And then the uh, frequency of them and the wavelength. Okay, I'll pause here while you write this down because I think it works. Let's look at a picture. So if this is a wave traveling along, and I think by the diagram it's traveling this way, traveling right, I can measure from one crest to another crest, and that is the wavelength. And then I could measure from crest to trough vertically, and I'd have twice the amplitude. So I can just measure crest, trough, divide by two. Or if I know what the, the median line is in between the two, it's the distance from the median line to the crest, or the median line to the trough would be the amplitude. Okay, And then the, um, the time, then the number of peaks that pass by me in each second would give me the frequency. Okay, So you've seen sine wave curves before in math. Um, and now you're going to see them a lot here as we talk about waves. This is the kind of wave that passes through the ocean, right? Um, and this is the kind of wave uh, also that electromagnet electromagnetic waves are most like. Um, and so you have oscillations going up and down as the wave moves through the medium. Wave speed. We talk about how fast is a wave mo moving. 
um, then its velocity, velocity, remember, is always meters per second. It's always displacement over time, meters per second. So how fast is that wave? Well, let's get its, uh, its wavelength, its lambda, and let's measure that in meters. And then let's multiply that by its frequency in hertz, because hertz, remember, is the inverse second, one over seconds. So if you take its wavelength and you multiply it by its frequency, then you have its velocity. Velocity is meters per second. If we get its wavelength in meters and we multiply that by one over seconds, then we have meters over seconds and we have its velocity. Lambda times frequency, wavelength times frequency. <clears throat> it gives us the speed of the wave. How fast is it? Uh, there are two kinds of waves. There are transverse waves, which is what we've been looking at so far. The background of this slide is all a transverse wave, right? Uh, and uh, the, the diagrams that I've been showing you involve the transverse waves. A transverse wave is where the particle rises or falls as the wave energy passes, like a wave in the sea. I don't know if you guys have paid attention to it, but if you're out deep enough in the ocean waiting for a, a wave to bodyboard or serve in, um, or you're just out there bobbing and hanging out with friends and you can't touch, right? You're not standing on the bottom of the ocean. Big wave comes. You don't immediately get carried to shore. You are a particle in the medium. Which, how do you move when the wave passes you? Do you go towards the beach? No, you go up and down, right, when the wave passes you. If you're just bobbing in the ocean, the wave comes. You may move forward and back a little bit, but mostly you move up and down as the wave passes you. And that's what happens to all the particles in the ocean as these waves go by. The particles themselves go up and down as the energy goes left or right, right, as the energy moves through the ocean. The particles rise or fall as the wave energy passes. Think of waves in the sea. A longitudinal wave, though, the particles move along the path of the wave as it passes. This is how a sound wave works. When I talk, the energy does not go up and then down as it's going towards Caleb's ear. It goes this way as it's going towards Caleb's ear. So if you think of waves in the sea for transverse waves, think of traffic. You live in Eva Beach, and you need to come here in the morning. There's a long time on the road where you are sitting still, and then you move forward. And then you're sitting still, and then you move forward. And then you're sitting still, and then you move forward. And that's what a transverse wave, sorry, a longitudinal wave does. The particles move forward and then back, and then forward and then back. And those, uh, those particles, it's like they're in a traffic jam. As the energy passes them, they go, whoa! And the energy moves forward with these waves of, of progression. If you were to stand on the bridge here of Kaahumanu uh, and look down at H1 in the middle of traffic, you would see this wave of motion where the cars are able to move. And you could watch cars able to move up there. And then as those cars move, cars behind them move, and the cars behind them move, but then they all stop again. And you could like watch the energy approach you and then pass by you as the motion comes and then they stop again, right? And that wave, that's a good picture of longitudinal waves. They, the particles move in the path of the wave as it passes. Here they move perpendicular to the path of the wave as it passes. So some pictures. This again is a transverse wave. The wave is going this way but the movement of the particles are this way, right? The particle, as the wave comes, the particle goes up, and then the particle goes down, and then the particle returns to equilibrium, right? So the wave comes by, the wave is going this way, the particles go opposite of it, that's transverse. Longitudinal, sorry, crest and trough, the direction that they're moving. Here's an example again. The energy is going this way, the particles are going up and down. Transverse uh, goes up and down, longitudinal goes along the course of the wave. The wave is traveling this way, and then the molecules move and then stop, and then move and then stop. And the movement of the, of the molecules is in the direction that the wave is going. That's a longitudinal wave. 
So we name these not necessarily crests and troughs, but we name them areas of compression where there's more particles per unit area here, and then areas of rarefaction where there are fewer particles per unit area. So this is a compression, this is a rarefaction, this is a compression, this is a rarefaction. And the wavelength is the distance from compression to compression, or from rarefaction to rarefaction, we have the same principle. Okay. So here, the, a ringing bell, and your ear is detecting it, and the energy moves in these regions of compression, and in between are, in, are regions of rarefaction. The medium is the ear. This is the longitude. Okay? Waves interact with each other. I'll give you a moment to write this down. Wave interactions. Waves, again, are not particles. So particles always, you know, travel in a straight line, unless acted upon, things of that nature. Waves are, where it's not particles, it's energy. And the particles just become a part of the energy's motion for a moment. Uh, so we're looking at how energy moves and how energy interacts with other things. Waves can reflect. I don't know if you've ever stood at a, uh, at like a breakwater and stood at the edge of a breakwater and watched a wave come into the breakwater. It crashes against the wall, the breakwater, and then it bounces back out, reflects back off. Um, Coalina is a place that comes to mind where you can watch that if you walk out to the edge of the rocks and you watch the waves come on. Of course, when they hit, there's this big, beautiful spray. But if you pay attention afterwards, there's a wave that goes off the breakwater and back out to the ocean. The energy hit the breakwater. And some of the energy gets absorbed in the spray and splash, but some of the energy just bounces off and goes right back down to sea. Um, if you hit, if, if it's a smaller wave and a smoother breakwater, like if you're walking along one of the sea walls at Waikiki, and uh, the walkway's there right on the seawall, you look down, you hit, see the wave bounce right back off the breakwater. Um, those are examples of reflection. So if I'm the energy of a wave, right, and I'm traveling down, I'm going in this direction, and I hit something, I just bounce right back off, and I keep going, but I've reflected. And it's just like a, a pool ball hitting the edge of the table. Um, waves can reflect right off of something and keep going in a new direction. That's reflection. Refraction sounds similar, but refraction is when waves change direction by passing from one medium to the other. This is why glasses work, because light behaves like a wave, and Right now, uh, right now, Nico is very fuzzy to me. I know that he's there, and I recognize that, that fuzzy thing as Nico, but right, my eyes can't focus well without my glasses. And the reason glasses work is because when light strikes the lens, it is changing medium from air to, to polycarbonate lenses, and it changes direction, and then the lens is able to change the direction of light coming through the lens and make it so that that light now makes sense to my eye. My eye goes, oh, that's Nico, right? Um, and so that's refraction, waves changing medium from one kind of substance to another. They shift their direction. If we change the shape of that boundary, then we can focus the energy on the other end. Okay, so that's refraction. And then diffraction, is waves bend around objects and spread out from narrow openings. So, uh, so for example, hi Andy, how are you doing? Can you hear me okay right now? Okay. Can you hear me okay right now? Yeah, okay, good. Can you hear me okay right now? Okay. Now I am currently not talking any louder. I'm just making this a bigger picture for you. If I do that, if I'm talking a little quieter, I'm not going to be listening. I'm not going to listen to this. If this were light, light, now I can't see it. Andy can't see me because the light hits the paper and can't go through it. Sound doesn't go through the paper either, but sound is of the kind of wave that can bend around corners. So sound is coming out this way and then it goes up this way. And Andy can hear me even though I'm talking through a piece of paper. But Andy, how many fingers am I holding? 
Sorry. Right. So, <laughs> light, light doesn't bend as well. Light can bend, but we'll see in a little bit that it has to do with how fast the thing moves as to how well it can bend. So, light doesn't bend around the paper between the ambient and the sound. It travels slower, sound can bend. And that bending is called diffraction. Let me show you some pictures. Here comes an incident wave. It hits something and it bounces off and it becomes a reflected wave. Okay? Um, the wave hits something and bounces off and goes right back. And in a perfect ideal system, it would bounce off of the other side and keep going back. You could have this oscillation going on. It's kind of like what happens when you pluck a guitar string, right? The guitar string is bound at one end and bound at the other, and you pluck it and you disturb the guitar string in the middle, and the energy goes down, up, down, up, and this oscillation creates vibrations in the air that you hear as a particular note. When you fret the string, you shorten the amount of, of distance that that uh, energy moves, which means it creates more oscillations per second, which makes it sound higher pitch to you, right? So um, the energy is going down the string and bouncing back and forth, and bounces a long time. If you just pluck the string and let it ring, it'll go for a long time until eventually air resistance and gravity and friction damp it down. Um, but the energy is just bouncing back and forth along the string. Okay? Um, here, this is diffraction. Waves coming in from deep water will actually turn a different direction in shallow water. And they that shift in direction um, is something that you can analyze mathematically. Um, and, and it has to do with the incident angle and the reflection angle off of the boundary line. And you'll get to see a little bit of that math now. You'll get to do that math in physics. Okay? Um, here's another example of it. Energy coming in hits a different medium and changes direction. And then this is diffraction. The narrower the gap, the more that the energy spreads out. So if energy hits a a fairly wide gap, it spreads out a little bit after that. If energy hits a very narrow gap, it spreads out more rapidly. So the, uh, the amount of um, spreading out has to do with the size of the gap. And then also when energy hits a corner, it bends around the corner. And there may be a space right here where that energy doesn't exist. But if you go out a little bit, you'll, you'll catch it again. So it, it's uh, too hard to do with whispering paper. I find hard to whisper Angela. Hi, Angela. Hi, Angela. Hi, Angela. Good morning. If I whisper at Angela, in that way, I can just whisper paper. I can't find you. I can't find you. Yeah, I can't find you. Stop something. All the things I can do. Better technology, you can find that little point where there's a, a shadow of the sound right behind the object, but not um, further up. Okay? Um, and here's some water waves where you can see this phenomenon. The, the water is coming in and then hits this gap, and now there are waves going this way, which are initially, which are actually exactly opposite the direction that the waves were coming in. At, at first. So they hit the gap and they spread out. And you could be over here and get waves, even though the initial the wave direction was, you know, not that wave. So it bends around and it, it spreads out on the waves. Okay? This is the last page. Wave interference. Waves amplitudes add when they intersect. So if crests are positive and troughs are negative, then a crest exactly meaning a trough cancels out to zero, there's no wave. But if two troughs add up, then it's way, way down lower than it used to be. And if two crests add up, then it's way, way, way higher than, they're, than they were before. So waves of the same amplitude that are out of step by half a cycle cancel each other to zero. And this is the physics behind the noise-canceling headphones.
headphones. You guys have noise canceling headphones. The headphone listens on the outside of the headphone to the noise around you. And then it plays the exact same sound, one half of a wavelength off of what you're hearing. So a car horn goes Mah! and the technology in the headphone hears that Mah! and plays Mah! but it plays that Mah! half a cycle off of the Mah! that the car made. So the car goes Mah! at the same time that your headphone is in the trough of that wavelength and the two add to zero. And then when the car horn is at a trough, the headphones play a crest, and so they add to zero. So the crest and the trough cancel each other off, and all of a sudden you don't hear the car horn. But the headphones are playing a car horn noise. It's just they're playing at half the wavelength behind the actual car horn noise. So it all adds to zero. And then the only thing that you hear is what the headphone intends you to hear, which is your, you know, Lecrae or whatever you're listening to. Um, or, you know, Rachmaninoff, if you're not. But the, um, the, the waves can add, uh, add up. So they can either get bigger, crest plus crest gets higher, trough plus trough gets lower, crest plus trough adds up to zero. Okay, so... Here, if it's constructive, this wave is being played and this wave is being played. You notice that they're in phase. They're cresting at the same time and troughing at the same time. So the result is a higher crest and a lower trough. Destructive, a trough at the same time as a crest, a crest at the same time as a trough. This wave plus this wave equal nothing. Okay, they cancel out. Here's a picture of that of the ocean, where you have one crest of one wave moving this way meets another crest of another wave moving this way. And when the two crests add up to each other, the, the upward energy from one wave meets the upward energy of another wave and sends the water flying. And so here you have some breakwater. A wave hit the breakwater and reflected off and met the wave behind it, and then these two waves collide, and boom, you get this huge, beautiful clap. Um, and that is, that is the upward addition of crest plus crest. Okay, If they had met so that they were both troughing, then it would have been a deeper trough, right? not a high crest. Oh, just kidding. The Doppler effect is my last one. I thought it was done. The Doppler effect, when an object in motion is emitting waves, right, then the waves get compressed as it moves towards you and the frequency increases as it approaches. The frequency drops off after it passes and the waves are elongated. So I can't run fast enough to have the Doppler effect be uh, exemplified in here, but I'm sure you've noticed uh, a siren, a, a, a fire truck or an ambulance or a police car going coming at you. It, and then it passes. Well, that isn't the sound that the ambulance is making. It didn't just happen to peak where you were standing. The ambulance is making the same noise. But as it comes at you, the waves get compressed, right? So if I'm making waves at Josiah, the waves are going and they're coming at him. But if I, making the noise, chase my waves, then I am piling up more waves between Josiah and me. Right? And that piled up wave sounds like it's more, like it's a higher frequency. So as the noisemaker gets closer to the thing making noise, the frequency goes up and you hear a higher pitch. But then as the thing making the noise passes you, now I'm still making but I'm running away from Josiah, right? And my waves are getting spread out. And so uh, the pitch drops, the frequency drops, the pitch drops, okay? So um, diagram real quick, and then there's a fun little video that I get to end at. Oh, and you need another one. Here we go. So this, this young lady is hearing a police siren, and so is this young man. And the police siren is making the same frequency sound 
but because the police is heading towards the boy, the crests pile up, and he's chasing the crests, and so it sounds like a higher pitch. She he, uh, hears fewer uh, crests because he's leaving them behind as he's making them, so she hears a lower pitch. Um, so, and it works with light as well. Um, if an object is emitting light and is leaving you, running away from you, sorry, running away from you, then it is red shifted. If it is running towards you, then it's blue shifted. So light works the same way as sound. Okay. Um, here's a fun little video. Okay, welcome to the Handler Scientific Society. We're going to make a little video today about the Doppler effect. We're here outside because most people have heard the Doppler effect. They might not know it, but we've all experienced it. Let me show you what I mean. So the funny thing is that when you're in the car, it doesn't sound the same. So you got to listen to that right now, try and figure out what's going on. Here we go. The neighbors love this family. And there was Nate pretending to do it right. It was the first. <laughs> there you go. So, oh, he's going to explain. Okay, this time we're going to do the experiment one last time. This time we're going to have the walkie talkies on. So we're going to be able to hear the car going by. We're also going to hear what it sounds like inside the car. So we can figure out what's really happening. <laughs> Well, I hope you could hear the difference. The sound from the horn was different when you were standing, watching the car go by, compared to when you were inside the car. And that's really what the Doppler effect is all about. It's an apparent change in the sound when either the object's moving or the observer's moving. But in reality, the sound doesn't change. That's pretty important because scientists can use the Doppler effect in radar to figure out what kind of storms are coming. Uh, they can use it when they look at stars to tell that the universe is expanding. So it's a pretty important phenomenon. Hope you learned something and you enjoyed it. Thanks very much. It's with the Adler Scientific Society. Today. Take it easy. This little girl is so excited that she was part of this experiment.